I think I, I, I would like to say a little bit more about just the way John, I think John thought, and that was this incredible attention to detail, but the thing that he also had was great, was, was great guts, great determination and great vision. But Radio is one of yeah. the hardest-nosed, highly intelligent uh, public servants with longevity like no one, I don't think, in Australia's history. He's an incredible individual. He's now 90 odd, and he's still having a positive impact upon the uh, future of Queensland. And, and perhaps it, what he had and what he recognised in John was this um, striving for absolute excellence and to, you know, to um, this incredible vision and ability to, to do it, but this. Um, gift that John had of making things absolutely wonderful and spectacular and being able to take uh, to create experiences for people that can change a culture, can change a city or improve a city. In Melbourne, the art centre that he, you know, changed the nature of culture in Melbourne. He placed it, it he bought the theatres out into the streets, the same thing as he does in Brisbane, where he, you know, brings people in. You have to have audiences, and, and that's what John would do, how to bring people in and keep them there and have them wanting to come back for more because this experience is so awesome. It, it, you know, it's wondrous. So you go back again and again, and it stays as it does, it has in Brisbane in people's memories. Denise, can I, I'll just intercede and just say, yes. just for people's benefit, if you haven't been to the Hamer Centre in Melbourne, it's an absolute must do. And not during a nighttime theatre event. Go uh, in the morning around 10 o'clock when it's quiet and just have a look at the amazing art collection. I mean, it was an incredible gift and that building is chock-a-block full of um, Australia's leg legendary painters, but they weren't. They weren't at all when John chose them. Their careers blossomed through their own creative in 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 talent after uh, John touched them on the shoulder and said, please um, join me in this amazing vision, this Hamer Centre. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was obviously an incredibly talented and visionary individual. Yeah, I think for Australia, and, and you know, he comes back to Australia um, for the Arts Centre, and then with Brisbane, he's, he's basically back here living. Um, and he has this vision to place Australia internationally, but not in a... Um, like in Melbourne, he brings with the... Melbourne International Festival, but he does it first in Brisbane, where he sets a stage that attracts international people to it, performers, artists. So he sets up the art collection, the sculpture collection in Brisbane, which is amazing, borrowing where he can. Um, so you can borrow Henry Moore, for instance, or Rodin for, in Australia, but then borrowing internationally as well. And that was Bob Minikin talks about his black book, one of the best you've ever, ever seen. He was a charismatic person. Um, and, you know, people talk about his, his, yeah, his charismatic, his charm, but it, this vision, and he could persuade people to come with him. So he persuaded some of the hardest nosed galleries in the world, private galleries in the world, you know, to lend and send work to Brisbane. That was gobsmacking. You know, you'd be going to do it today because of um, insurance. But it was amazing that he could do that. But then he puts Australian, young Australian sculptures, he gives them commissions. Um, there were 16 commissions, for, um, but not all of those were Australian, but there's 16 commissions for young artists. And that's very John, because he was given such opportunities when he was young, and he believed in building our culture. And then, of course, he includes the um, Aboriginal section as well. 
um, in Brisbane, which he also did in Melbourne. So he's creating, you know, he's, he's positioning and um, Australian art in a way that, it, you know, would be internationally positioned. And so it becomes really important in those ways, I think. And Expo um, said, you know, that he wanted art to sit beside science and technology. That is a type of, you know, the whole of a culture, but the importance of art and the notion of the mixing the um, sculptures, you know, which we could call high art, um, with uh, the the human factor figures, which which are, are wonderful in their um, accessibility, but also you know he made the Nigel Triffitt um, sculptures as well, the the Voyage of Discovery, and some of those others. The um, the one that was a what I call a businessman's toy, the the circles within oh, the circles yes, within, yes. you know, apparently. Dan Flannery saw him buy that in a shop in um, LA. Um, so, and it comes back and gets it made into a moving object, so to speak. You know, and of course, we haven't talked about his, his love of robotics. Um, That's true. And so, he's got the robotics there. What we might do there, uh, Denise, is again break off. So, But the drive to make sure that, that, that what he saw across the horizon was um, was something that, that finally came to reality and that that drive and that sort of determination to make to make the, um, the work um, come to life 